everybody has that one thing that they turn to when they're feeling down. You're having a bad day, things aren't going quite as you planned, and this is the thing you turn to to make yourself feel better. That thing for me? Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> and Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon is not a game for everyone. More than likely, you'll either be like, farming? Eh. Uh, or farming? Yeah! It's one of those things where you have trouble explaining it to people. There are a lot of different games in the Harvest Moon franchise. Some are really easy, like Friends of Mineral Town. There's not really any specific goal, and you can basically run your life however you want. Or if you want to go really far back, the Harvest Moon for the original Game Boy, in which basically all you do is farm. Though you can't technically game over if you don't do well enough. Which makes it one of the only games I can think of where you can lose simply by being too lazy. Game over! Too apathetic! Then there's some really hard ones like Hero of Leaf Valley for the PSP, where not only can you lose, you probably will if you don't know what you're doing. Heck, I can't even remember where to go half the time. Hello? Anybody? Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> There are even some Harvest Moon spin-off games like Rune Factory, which is basically a fantasy Harvest Moon. Oh wait, it says that in the title, doesn't it? I guess nobody really needs my explanation. <sighs> I'll be over here in my house if anybody needs me, which they won't. Hey, who are you? Get out of my house. Get out of my house. GET OUT OF MY HOUSE! Hey, I got a cheap hoe! I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. Ugh, I got nothing. But the game I'm gonna talk about today is Harvest Moon Animal Parade for the Wii. Back when it first came out, I didn't get too hooked on it for some reason, but having played it much more since, it's actually one of my favorite entries in the series. The game starts off and everything sucks for everybody. Crops won't grow, fires won't start, wind won't blow, and fish won't be there. And your annoying little friend Finn, who no one else can see for some reason, insists that you go see the Harvest Goddess. But it turns out that we can't get there yet because along with every other problem they have, their bridge is broken too. And poor old Bo here seems to have forgotten his tools. Don't worry Bo, it's not like I have my own stuff to do, having just moved into a rundown farm with barely anything planted. I'll go get your tools for ya. Go to town, get the tools, give them to Bo, profit. Oh, but wait. Bo may have his tools now, but unfortunately, he's just a bit too hungry to get any real work done. You know, Bo, you really could have gone and gotten some lunch while you were sitting here doing nothing this whole time. Before he can work, Bo needs not just a meal, but a singular strawberry and some milk. As the old saying goes, beggars can be choosers as long as the developers program it that way. Eventually, the bridge does get fixed. You appease an angry ragtag group of ferocious animals that includes a bunny, weasel, and a squirrel. Oh no, it's dangerous. I read it in a documentary movie one time. The bunnies, it could get you. I think it was called Monty Python. And you finally see the harvest goddess. Some tree is dying, and boy, is that a bad thing. Are you gonna help? Leave it to me! No problem! Yeah! Wow. Those are some pretty good options. I can't even decide. So you willingly, of course, agree to help out the Harvest Goddess, but the main story quests are only a small portion of the actual game. First things first, your farm. Harvest Moon wouldn't be Harvest Moon without it. It's like having a pizza without the pizza part. <laughs> or an even better analogy than that. Of course, as always, you can plant crops to make money, but you can also do things like fertilize the soil to grow higher quality crops, poop joke, and upgrade your tools to make the work faster and more efficient. My hammer skill is now level three, and I just seem so excited about it. You also raise animals. Ever since I was a kid, I always named my cows after weapons for some reason. And with my chickens, I named them after female Zelda characters. You got Zelda, Saria, of course, Medley, and then there's, uh, you know, let's just forget about that one. You gotta be careful with your animals, though. If you don't take good care of them, they die. Medley? Medley! She was the best chicken in the world. Technically, she was some kind of bird human, but for me, she was a chicken. And she's dead forever. Oh well, let's just buy another chicken and name her Medley. Yay, she's alive again. It's a miracle. But you don't just have animals to increase your profit margins. You can also have pets. Cats, dogs, rabbits, squirrels, bird... Well... Apparently not birds. Raccoons, baby boars, bears, pandas, and even penguins. Uh, penguin? Are you okay? Do you, 
Do you need medical attention? Just text me. Just text me later. But me, I got a ferret and named it Pixel. Why? Because I actually have a ferret named Pixel in real life. See? Weasel ferret. Maybe it's time I got myself a cute animal mascot. You know, a little gimmick character to set me apart. Yeah. Laying around by moonlight. Doing some stuff by daylight. Hopping around and doing flips and stuff. She is the one named Pixel Ferret. Yeah! Actually, never mind. I forgot ferrets aren't really good at stuff. God, why do you just abandon shit like that? I also have a snake, because, I don't know, why not? And as you can see right there, I have a TV. It's not really that necessary, but boy, is it a TV. Hey, look, it's Ellie. She was the first girl I ever married in a Harvest Moon game. This brings back so many memories and treasures. Friends of Mineral Town, Game Boy Advance, about 10 years old. She was my first Harvest Moon love. Things were peachy. We got married, started a family. It was the happiest time of my life until things got all kinds of messed up. It happened on a plane one late December night. I accidentally erased my save file. Just like that, gone. No goodbyes, no nothing. It's times like that that really get you thinking, makes you cherish what you have, because you never know when you might lose it. But Harvest Moon isn't just about farming and animals, it's also about the social aspect, because who cares if you have a lot of money if you're sad. There's a lot of people in the town and surrounding areas and you can befriend them, or you can just take pictures of them. Here's a lovely picture. Here's me. <laughs> and would you just look at that one? And here's... uh... Uh, you know, actually, l let's put the pictures away for now. There's three ways you can befriend people. You can talk to them, you can give them things, or you can rub them. Yes, rub them. There's a lot of weird and almost inappropriate things I can think of in Harvest Moon games, like the Harvest God is sometimes not forgiving you in Friends of Mineral Town, Dunhill taking a disturbingly high interest in your character in A New Beginning, and the fact that Kai is clearly supposed to be a slave in Harvest Moon 64, but this one has got to be at least the second most creepy thing I can think of. You can rub old people, you can rub young people, you can rub farming people, magic people, people lifting weights, two people at a time, three people at a time, you can rub everybody. And you can even rub little children? They should lock me up and throw away the key. I am a terrible, terrible little pixelated person. I love how it says second player on it, as if you're supposed to play this game with a friend just sitting around waiting for his turn to rub someone for five seconds. But the best part has got to be the music that plays when you finish. What's the benefit of befriending people, you ask? Well, besides filling your lonely soul with an empty, artificially manufactured sense of fulfillment, you get cutscenes! Yeah! Hey, don't worry, man, I'll make it extreme! No, I'd like a normal table. You got it extreme, baby! Cutscenes, cutscenes, cutscenes! That's Luke, by the way. He's not the brightest. Uh, Luke, watch out with that. No, 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 no! <laughs> Besides, you look way too trashy to work in a classy joint like this. You're just jealous that I'm the top dancer in town. I don't care about your stupid dancing, and even if I did, I'm sure I could find a better outfit than that. Oh no, you didn't. Here's a cutscene where the mayor somehow got stuck in a fireplace. You have the option to either help him or sit there and watch. I, of course, did the latter. Over and over and over. I think he may have died, actually. Oh well, couldn't be helped. If you befriend the rival couples, they can also get married, and eventually they'll even have kids. Gave them tea every day. There I am in the background, look at me. Then they got married, then they got married, then they got married, that's how life works. You can also romance yourself a lady. Or man. Or man lady? I'm not really sure. And once they like you enough, they'll start saying lovey-dovey stuff like this. Hey, PPG, do you love me? If you do, will you tell me? I'll say it too. Heart. To which I reply by running off and flirting with the dancer girl 15 feet away. She then goes into the tailoring salon and shuns me, which I deserve because again, I am a terrible little pixelated man. Eventually, even you can get married. And just like in real life, you have to climb the tallest mountain on the planet and get a blue feather before you can propose. Because blue feathers found on sea level 
just aren't quite romantic enough. This place kind of looks like it was taken right out of Skyrim, except instead of a talking dragon at the peak, there's a bunch of little derpy harvest sprites, which is almost just as cool. You can even choose how to propose. Personally, I like, I want to eat your lunches. Gets the chicks every time. Is day 18 of autumn a good date for our wedding? Well, it is the 17th of autumn at nighttime, so... Sure, why not? And the very next day, we're married. Time to start our new life together. The first thing on the agenda? Do my chores for me. <laughs> she fell for it. Oh, and remember when I said the rubbing was the second creepiest thing in Harvest Moon? Well, the first is the girl I married. Luna. She seems decently normal in Animal Parade, despite the childlike flowers in her hair and star and heart stickers in her overly pink room. But in Harvest Moon Tree of Tranquility, while she's apparently confirmed to be 16, she looks about 10 at the oldest. And she's an eligible bachelorette. Just look at how short she is compared to you. Her feet don't even reach the ground when she sits. Maybe I'm being... I don't know, close-minded here, but if she has to jump in the air to give you a kiss during your wedding ceremony, maybe you should wait a couple years. Just saying. Now I know what you all must be thinking, Peanut Butter Gamer, why is this even called Animal Parade? Are there animals? Are there parades? Are there animal parades? Will you ever shut up? Well, yes, sort of, sort of, and probably not. You may recall a somewhat forgettable mayor from Magical Melody named Theodore. Well, apparently he got fired from mayoring because now he runs a circus that comes to town every month. He should probably get fired from that also because he seems to have lost most of his animals. Guy can't do nothing right. He even gets crushed by a hippo. Who even does that anymore? The parade, or circus, can't continue until you find them. Which, honestly, I should have guessed. Nothing gets done in Harvest Moon unless you do it. To be honest, I don't even know how these people functioned as human beings before I showed up. While not the main goal of the game, finding and returning the animals to the circus is one of the bigger quest lines you can do. There's three of them hidden in different areas, the giraffe behind the lighthouse, the elephant in the forest, and the hippo in the swamp. How you even manage to lose animals as big as an elephant and a giraffe is beyond me. But this is Theodore we're talking about here, so yeah. Once you find them, you have to give them a specific kind of food they want before they'll rejoin the circus. I guess hiding behind a lighthouse for days at a time would give you an appetite. Wait, how long has the giraffe been lost again? About two months? Oh boy, I am afraid to look behind this lighthouse. Oh, geez. yep, that's what I was afraid of. <sighs> Theodore's not gonna like this. Shoot. Once you finally rescue all the animals and bring them back to the circus, you unlock the animal taxi service in which the animals will take you, or in case of the elephant, fly you somehow, to wherever you want to go in Harmonica Town. But then there's the pig. You have to carry him because he's kind of sucky, but I'll let it slide because... Aww, little piggy. You know, when you think about it, this game is kind of weird. The whole game revolves solely around you. You're the only one who can make anything happen, not to mention the fact that you're the only one who can see the Harvest Sprites, the Harvest Goddess, and later on, the Harvest King. It's almost like your character is insane. Nothing he's seeing is actually there. Nothing that's happening is actually happening. And he's only making it up in his head. And it gets you thinking. Maybe the real world is nothing but, you know, our made up imagination. Maybe this whole room isn't here. Maybe there's no such thing as Peanut Butter Gamer. Maybe there's no such thing as the internet. And maybe there's no such thing as you. And it's all just made up in our heads. And maybe our world, or what we perceive as our world, is actually nothing but a little speck of dust on someone else's. It's pretty crazy. Oh boy, my turnips reached the third level of their growth cycle. Want to stay updated on future videos? Well then click that little subscribe button down there. Because that's what it's for. And on top of that, you can follow me on my Facebook and Twitter pages in the description below. Hey everybody, here's some other videos I did. You can click on them 
with your mouse. That's a new computer uh, hardware that YouTube developed recently. Or you can check out my gameplay channel where I got stuff going on there too. It's cool. Bye-bye.